share the screen with me. I'll uh, go into uh, presentation mode on the slides and we'll just do that. Okay, that's cool. Actually, on your end, you just go up to the little thing and it'll say like share screen. Do you see that where you go up to the top there and just share screen? All right, down at the bottom for me. Oh, <laughs> are you back in Florida or? Yeah. Let's see. Okay, yeah, sharing screen. For some reason, your uh, picture is kind of, your, like the video thing, I don't know if you've got that covered up or if you don't. Oh, I've got to... that covered. Yeah, okay. I always keep that covered. I don't trust those cameras. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh... If, you ever, if you ever see it, if you ever see, um, like not staged video, like out in public, uh, anyone like James Comey or Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook, any of those types of people, you'll notice that they always have a piece of tape over the camera lens on their phones because they know that even if it's not on, there are ways for people to tap into that and see what's coming, see through your, your cameras. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, uh um... Yeah, I mean, today can we just cover the uh, the that one the green? Yep, the code. conservation event. I've got I've got four case studies. I'm going to go through, show how much they say, how much they made, how much they saved, how much after fees they pocketed and they walked away with. So, I'll give the uh, I'll give the long detailed explanation about it, and that you know, kind of really you know, educate them on it, and then go into the examples. So, I think the slides just kind of. Okay. Jump right into this and boom into conservation easement. Perfect. Got a one million two hundred uh, one point two million dollar example from last year. A uh, four million nine hundred fifty thousand dollar example from last year. A six hundred thirty five thousand dollar example from this year, and a one million dollar example from this year. Now, one thing on the, uh, the just before we get going, that the fees there, it says before fees. Does all the fees, do they like vary per case? Yeah, or? so that's why I've got over the side then on each one. So before fees, it's that. After the fee of, in this case, 15188 they kept 46079 And this one, their fee obviously was a lot higher, um, but they kept 547 uh, They paid a 40 they kept 136 So. Okay. Yeah, what, yeah. what determines the fee level? Is it uh, just the complexity or what, what is it? Yeah, amount of, amount of product being used. Um, you know, we've only got limited amount of, only a limited amount of dollars can go into this each year. So how much, how much land conservation product is being used? Um, how much other stuff are we doing for them? In some cases, people are, we're doing, you know, obviously multiple strategies. So the fee is going to vary with, with all of that. Okay. Like the fee to the fee to savings on a cost segregation is is typically going to be more in the thirty to forty percent of what they save versus you know conservation easement. It's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty to twenty five percent of what they save. It just it, it varies. Okay. And the bigger right. the savings, the low the, the bigger the savings, the lower the fee will be as a percentage of savings. You right right. Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. We can just, you can just go. And so I'll, I'll just, we don't have anyone live on this one. We're just recording this one and then you're gonna send it out? Yes, yes. Okay, cool. Cool, good to know, good to know. All right, I'm gonna uh, make sure my phone's not somewhere where if it starts buzzing, it makes noise, okay. Let me make sure mine is not as well. Okay, good to go. Great. Were you going to do an intro? Oh, I didn't know if you wanted me to or not. Um, I mean, it's not real necessary. I mean, the people that I'm sending this to know me, and I'll just be like, here's a, a quick Yeah, overview. so I think if they know you, I think it would be good for them to hear 
you just kind of talk about the fact that we've known each other for, you know, several years now. You've seen a lot of your clients work with me. Uh, and you felt you feel that this is a really important part of any any financial plan is is what we're doing here, paying less in taxes. Okay. That's okay. That's good at the beginning. Yeah, that'll that'll work. Okay, I'll go ahead and start now. Okay, guys. Um Today, I have the privilege of working with a guy that I've known for years, and he saved some of our clients just tons of money in taxes, and his name is Wes Mateka. He's from Tax Vantage, and he has just redefined what it means to save taxes uh, using strategies that, you know, usually are reserved for billionaires, uh, not for normal people that are working and owning businesses. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Wes. He's a really uh, upfront guy. So uh, he's going to give you a quick overview today of what he does. So with that, Wes. Thanks. If, and, and when, if, if, the, if the idea of paying less in taxes, keeping more of what you make is of interest to you, then you're definitely in the right place. John, the, the introduction was great. Um, I appreciate that, and it is always a pleasure working with you. And we have literally saved several of, of John's clients six figures a year and up in taxes. That's actual money in their pocket, more money for doing the same work, six figures a year extra. And uh, the title of this, this presentation is uh, Paying Less in Taxes Isn't Too Good to Be True. That's actually the subtitle of my uh, number one best-selling book that came out uh, early in, in 2017. Uh, it was actually my second book, but this was a number one bestseller, The Updated Ultimate Guide to Cutting Your Taxes, Guaranteed Why Paying Hundreds of Thousands of Dollars in Taxes Isn't Too Good to Be True. And that subtitle came about as a result of after talking to literally thousands and thousands of people over the last eight years about this topic, um, the fact of the matter was so many of them, after they'd hear about it, that was their reaction. Well, this sounds great and I'd really love to do it, but it sounds too good to be true. And if it sounds too good to be true, I found in life it usually is. Well, that's an unfortunate um, mindset. It, it's, it's, it's not a mindset of unlimited growth and potential because just because something you haven't heard of something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Uh, as John said in the introduction, these are strategies that have been around and used very successfully without negative incident by billionaires and major corporations for years. And what we've really done is made them available for the main street millionaire, somebody who's making six figures and maybe is worth a million dollars or more, but who isn't um, of that ultra wealthy status of having $50 million in personal assets and a, uh, a family practice that is specialized in dealing with these types of things. And the fact is most tax preparation CPAs have never had any reason to, to know about these. A uh, little background on me, I grew up in a medium sized Midwestern town, a heavily, heavily blue collar town uh, where people, worked really hard to make a modest living on a production line in a automotive or, or tool plant of, of any different type of manufacturing uh, plants in the area. And they worked hard, they did okay, they, they lived their life and they hoped and prayed that at the end of it all, their, uh, their, their union pension was gonna be enough to get them through their retirement years. And I watched that growing up and it was kind of, curious about it. I, I didn't live in a family that was a blue collar family. We, we were white collar, but I had a friend whose dad was just like all the other dads that worked on the, on the line, except one thing. He was what I thought of at that point in life growing up wealthy. And I went to him when he was older and I, I said to him, you know, Mr. Jensen, why is it you did the same job on the same production line as all the other guys in the neighborhood did? and you have so much more money in your retirement than they do. And he said, Wesley, I figured out early on in life that making money was easy, keeping it was hard. So I started spending more of my time focused on keeping what I made than I did on actually earning it. And that's really gets right to the root of what we do. It is possible legally and ethically and morally for you to keep more of what you make. Um, We've got a process, our true tax process, followed by our true audit guarantee. 
that does exactly that. It's a process whereby reviewing your previous year's tax returns, your, your expected income for this year, and a couple other small items, we're able to go through and put together a plan using our process that will tell you, I'm gonna show this to you here in just a little bit, exactly how much money you're gonna save in taxes, exactly what it's gonna cost, and exactly how much extra that's going to mean in your pocket each year. Now, saving money on taxes and then ending up in a nightmare audit situation is of no, no good. So we also back everything with our true audit guarantee, which states very clearly, if you're ever audited because of the strategies we put in place, we will defend that audit. And if that audit results in any penalties or interest, we'll pay the penalties and interest. So keep in mind, this is uh, based on California state tax rates, but uh, if you're married filing jointly and live in California, every dollar you make above $467,000 a year is being taxed at over 50%. About 52, 53% of every dollar above that is going to the government, not you. You're keeping less than they're getting for the work you put in. So I think it's time for a paradigm shift in how we think about things. If we were all in a room right now, uh, and I asked for a show of hands to this next uh, question, uh, I would probably see 75, 80% of the hands in, in the room go up. But how many of you have ever gone to your CPA or have gone to your CPA maybe even repeatedly and said, there must be something you can do about what I'm paying in taxes. There has to be a way to reduce this number. And how many of you have gone and done that and had your CPA say back to you, you should be happy you're making enough money that you have to pay this much in taxes? Yeah. That is a disheartening thing to hear. And unfortunately, it's not your CPA's fault that they say that. Don't get upset with them. Their job is a, as a historian to look back at all of your income and financial transactions for the previous 12 months, create a historical record of that, and then send it on to the government with a check from you rendering unto Caesar what is Caesar's so that you pay your taxes according to the way they calculated them. What we do is very different. What we do is we're looking at these advanced tax strategies that when applied in this tax year will impact this tax year in a major way. It is possible legally, ethically, and morally to pay far less in taxes than you're currently paying. And we are not talking about a few thousand dollars. We are talking, if not six figures in less in taxes every year, six figures less in taxes within the first two or three years of being a client. Now, again, no matter how many times you've been told it is what it is, uh, there is a solution that'll keep more of what you make. So you can do more for the world you live in and the people you live in it with. And conservation easement tax law is a big part of us being able to do this. So um, I'm gonna give you kind of a, 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 a college course 101 on conservation easement tax law. Our government, the federal government, has been in the, the business of preserving land in our country going back to Teddy Roosevelt and the formation of the national park system. And uh, ever since then, the government has been buying up land, protecting that land, creating parks, uh, putting easements in areas to, to protect uh, from encroachment of, of overdevelopment in certain areas. But in the mid 80s, in the Ronald Reagan era, of our country, uh, we had our last major tax overhaul, which keep in mind, that's over 30 years ago, and it's the last major tax overhaul we've had. And at that point, there was a uh, push from, from President Reagan to Congress to come up with ways to incentivize private citizens to do the things that the government just couldn't continue to keep spending money doing. And one of those things was conserving land. So they came up with a tax law that incentivized landowners of certain types of land in areas, predominantly areas that used to be rural areas, but that are now suburban areas, areas that used to be out in the middle of the, the county, out in the countryside, that are now surrounded by new housing subdivisions and schools and stores and office buildings as cities grew. Well, and I'm gonna pause right here. I don't want you to tune up because you think I'm talking about landowners only. You do not have to own any land to participate in this tax strategy. No land, you do not need to own any to do this. So that clarified, stick with me, even if you're not a landowner. Um, this is not about, this is not for the landowner perspective on this, but the way the law was written was originally to incentivize those landowners of land like that to give up the economic benefit for whatever reason 
of developing their land like everyone else around them was doing, and instead place that land into a permanent conservation easement that would protect the land forever. No matter who owns the land in perpetuity, that land would be protected from ever being altered. No buildings or roads on it. Now, if it was a farm, they can continue to farm it. They just can't put new buildings and roads on it. Now, this was a great plan, and it was one of the smartest things I've ever seen Congress do. They did a great job on this, but, uh, and it worked really well for like the Irvine Ranch Company, uh, major developers like that. But for the most part, most small farmers around the country couldn't take advantage of this because A, it's very expensive. It costs about $250,000 to figure out how much of a deduction you're going to get for placing your land into an easement. Uh, that's more than most farmers are willing to spend. And number two, the deduction created is so large in the tens of millions of dollars in most cases that most farmers couldn't take advantage of it. After all, if you make $100,000 a year, what are you going to do with a $20 million tax deduction? You're not going to get to use it, that's for sure. So here we had a situation where there was this great plan that allowed people who owned land to create this major tax deduction for conserving land, but they didn't have the income that would allow them to take care of the, take advantage of the deduction. On the other hand, we have a lot of clients, individuals just like yourself, who make a lot of money and would really love to have that tax deduction, but don't have the land to create the deduction with. So we started putting them together. And what we do is we work with those landowners around the country. We place their land into a uh, LLC tax to partnership, and within that partnership, do that very expensive study and determine the value of uh, the deduction that'll be created if we forego the highest and best economic use uh, development of the land. And then we offer this uh, exclusively to our clients through a private placement offering that's about 300 pages long. And in effect, what you do is you're investing into the development rights of this land. And it's very clear what is going to be developed on the land and what the value of the land is going to go up to if you do the development. Now, once we have all our investors into that real estate development opportunity, the investors uh, vote to do one of three things. Um, hold, pr proceed and develop the land as outlined in the offering or, or place the land into a conservation easement uh, and take the tax deduction that comes from doing that. Now, this is really powerful because typically the deduction you get back for doing that is $4.40 per dollar invested into the partnership. Now, in 2017, we happen to have a really special project that has a really big upside to it that our clients are actually getting a five to one deduction for every dollar invested. And the investment dollars come from money that would have otherwise had to be sent in in taxes anyways. So let's look at how this actually works. I'm gonna go through four examples. This is actually, first two are gonna be examples of clients from last year. The second two will be new clients in 2017. This client in 2016 had a adjusted gross income, AGI, that's line 37, 38 area on your personal 1040. It's the number, that's your income before your itemized deductions on your personal 1040. They had a $1.2 million income they had very little in itemized deductions, only $43,000 worth, which left them with a taxable income of $1,157,000 and a federal tax bill alone of just under $400,000. I think you can see my arrow on the screen there so you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about as I do that. Now, what we were able to do for them is out of that $403,839 that they would have spent in taxes, we took $134,901 and instead invested it into one of these real estate development projects. Because of that multiplier that they got, they ended up with a $590,000 tax deduction. Now, why that amount? Well, we're allowed to deduct up to the top 50% of your AGI, that number on your tax return around line 3738, 50% of that from being taxable income. Well, we went just below the 50% with them and created a $590,000 deduction. That dropped their taxable income from the $1,157,000 down to only $567,000, which dropped their federal tax bill from $403,000 down to only $170,199. 
that reduced their federal tax bill by $233,640. Now, before you get too excited, that's not how much they actually saved because the investment that they made, remember they, they, they took money that they would have otherwise sent in in taxes and invested $134,091 of it into one of these projects. They're not gonna ever get that money back from the investment. That investment's gone because the value of the partnership was in the development opportunity of the land and that land can no longer be developed because we've placed an easement on it instead, protecting the land forever, which is also a nice benefit to the community the land's in. So when we net that out of their federal savings, they actually saved about $99,549 on their federal tax bill. Now, in 26 states, California being one of them, this flows through to your state tax return. And in their case, they saved an additional $76,700 in state income taxes. So when combined, after we net out the investment, they had saved $176,249 in taxes. Now we do charge a fee. We are not a not-for-profit uh, organization. Uh, we save our clients a lot of money and we do charge a fee. In this client's case, they paid a fee of $40,096, which left them after that with an extra $136,153 extra money in their pocket for 2016. Now, how much more of whatever it is you sell for a living or how many more patients, if you're a medical professional, do you have to see? How much more of whatever it is do you have to do every year to generate enough revenue at your business level, to generate at whatever your profit margin is, enough profit to generate after a 50 plus uh, tax rate on those top dollars, an extra $136,153 for the year. It's a lot. In this client's case, it was, they would have had to have done about $3 million more, I mean, 300,000, no, it was more, no, it was closer to $3 million more revenue in their business to generate enough profit, to generate enough income to actually pocket that $136,000 extra for the year. So that's a big, big number. So let's look at another one. This is actually a, a, a even higher level client. They make $4,950,000 AGI. They were paying $1,866,267 of that in federal income taxes. We took $500,000 of, of that $1.8 million and redirected it, invested into a partnership, giving them a $2.2 million additional itemized deduction, which dropped their taxable income from that $4.8 to $2.6 million, which dropped their federal tax bill from $1.8 to just under a million dollars in taxes, saving them $871,200 in federal income taxes. Now remember, they invested $500,000 that they will not get back. But even when we subtract that out of the savings, they saved $371,200 in federal income taxes. This flowed through to their, their California state tax return. They saved another $290,400 in state taxes, which means that their net savings before our fee was $661,600. They paid $114,396 fee for the year, so they pocketed an extra $547,204 for the year. That's actual more money in their pocket for the year after all expenses, investments, fees combined are taken out. That's a huge, Huge take-home pay raise for them. Here's a, here's a client from this year. Uh, it's a little bit, um, might be a number some of you uh, feel a little more comfortable with. Maybe for some you're going, no, that's not enough. Good, I hope it's not enough. But hey, uh, $635,629 uh, adjusted gross income for this year. Based on there, they had some pretty good sized uh, itemized deductions already. They would have still paid $160,217 in federal income taxes this year based on that number. We reduced their uh, quarterly estimates to, for the year by $100,000 and then took 58,163 of it and invested it into one of these partnerships. Now, remember this year, we've got this great project that's actually throwing off a five to one uh, ROI deduction versus uh, investment. So they're getting a $290,815 deduction for that. That's reducing their federal taxes from 160,000 to 58,236, 
that's $101,981 reduction in their federal taxes for the year. We net out again that investment that they don't get back. And their net savings over and above that on the federal level was 43,818. They save another 17,449 this, they'll save another 17,449 this year on state, which means that their net savings before fees is 61,267. They're paying, they've paid us a fee for the year of $15,188, which means they're keeping $46,079 more money in their pocket. That's a big take home pay raise when you compare that to before they were, they were losing how much money of, of the 635 they were losing before. Getting that extra $46,000 per year for as long as they continue to earn that kind of money makes a big difference. That's money that can go to pay for their children's college education, fund their retirement planning, uh, use it to buy more real estate, do whatever it is they want to do with that money, they can do that rather than paying taxes with it. So uh, we're going to look at one more from this year. Uh, this one is a uh, household making right at a million dollars this year. Um, this is actually a, a dentist in uh, California, very successful dentist. Um, and they were gonna pay on that based on the numbers. They've got 78,000 in itemized deductions. They were gonna pay $310,610 in federal taxes alone this year off of that. So you know, you hear a million dollars, but time you take out that federal number and then what they would have paid in, in state, you're looking at them keeping less than $600,000. They were gonna, their, their net take home on that million would be about 590 without this strategy. Well. We redirected $99,340 of what they were going to have to pay in taxes. That generated a $496,700 uh, deduction for them, itemized deduction, which reduced their federal tax bill from that $310,000 to only $115,861 in taxes. That's a $194,759 reduction in taxes. We net out that investment that again, they will not be getting back and they saved 95,419 at the federal level that flows through to California return, saving them another 64,571, which means that they saved $159,990 before fees. Now they've paid us a fee for this year of $35,798. So when we net that out, they're pocketing an extra $124,192 out of that million dollars income this year. That is a sizable increase in take home pay for this, this family. And we are thrilled with what the, their reaction, how much they're getting to save and uh, what they're gonna be able to do with that as, as they continue to work. These savings are what all of our clients see. You've just seen four different case studies at four different income levels. This is, this is not uh, unusual. This is exactly what you can expect to see if you interact with us and say, hey, uh, yeah, I, I think I'd like more money to work with. Well, if, if you're interested in having more money for you to work with, if you want to be able to experience those kind of savings, I would tell you to take out your smartphone right now and I want you to text John's last name, Duncan. Text Duncan to 323-870-1040. 323-870-1040. I want you to text that, not text Duncan. When you type that number in your, your text thing, then in the message, just type in John's last name there and, and text that. And we'll have a quick conversation. I'll get your name and your email address. We'll get you some, some initial information and find a time to have a, a, a conversation about what you can actually say. We're gonna ask you to send us your, uh, your, your 2016 1040 tax return. I'm gonna ask you to tell me what's your income like this year versus last year? Is it gonna be the same? Is it up 5,000, 20,000, $100,000 versus last year? Is it down from last year? Hopefully not, but what, where were you at in comparison to last year? Where do you think you're gonna end this year? Um, and I'm gonna also ask you, how much have you done in charitable giving this year? How much will you have given to charity by the end of 2017 for this year? And with those three pieces of information, we're gonna be able to tell you, just like I showed you in these four case studies, I'm gonna be able to show you how much you're gonna to need to invest, 
how much it's gonna reduce your federal and your state by, what your fee is gonna be, and how much that's going to equal as far as extra dollars in your pocket for this year. What's that number going to be? Um, now, we're already uh, getting close to the end of the year. This is a strategy we really need to plan on wrapping up by the early part of December. Uh, this is not something we wanna try and do at the very, very end of the year, and it's certainly not something we can do after the first of the year. This has to be completed before December 31st. Uh, most of the people who do this, we have wrapped up by December 1st or that first week of December at the latest. So it's important that you text that, text dunk into that number as soon as possible and, and follow up on the conversation with us so we can get the information we need that we can give you the numbers you need to make an informed, wise financial decision to start keeping more of what you make. That's awesome, Wes. Um, one quick question I always get just, just off the, the cuff here, and then I'll let you go. What is the actual cap? Like, the, back to your example of like 1 million, what's the cap of how much somebody could do with these? Like, what does the IRS say in that area? Sure. So, that there's not really a cap. What there is, is you're limited to creating a deduction of no more than 50% of your adjusted gross income. So if you look at your 2016 tax return and go down to, I think it's line 37 or 38, uh, right around there, you'll see the, where it says your AGI or your adjusted gross income for the year. Compare what last year's, this year's gonna be like the last year. So say your, your last year tax return said 1,010,050 dollars and you go well yeah but I'm be up 150,000 so okay now we're at you know one million one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars well if you take 50 percent of that that's the maximum deduction you can create okay yeah I get that all the time what's the max why can't we just wipe it all out <laughs> wipe all the yeah, income well, out you know they, this, they used to allow you to do 30 percent and then in December of 2015 this will show you is Congress in favor of this or not in favor? 96% of Congress voted to make this a permanent 50% uh, uh, deduction back in December of 2015. There's an overwhelming support for this to, to, to see more of this done. Yeah, it's a great program for the, for the society and for the, the person involved, that's for sure. Yeah, so, it's kind of, one of the, you, you mentioned society. I, I think it's great. I love when I talk with the clients about this and explain what the piece of land is that they're helping to conserve by doing this because they, uh, most people really enjoy hearing that and knowing that, hey, look, I didn't just save money on my taxes. I really helped to preserve a interesting piece of land that otherwise would have been developed. Right, instead of just sending it into the government and who knows what happens. Exactly. <laughs> So that, th thanks for going through this today. Um, you know, just you did a great presentation. It's it's a great program that everybody that sees it loves it. So I really appreciate it. Hey, thank you. And it, it, it's it's always fun working with your clients. They they all. Um, I love how excited they get when they see how much more money they're getting to keep this year. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. This is just above and beyond what their CPA even thinks about doing. So it is incredible. That's for sure. Well, so, great. I look forward to talking to everyone. Yeah. So we'll talk soon and uh, I'll go ahead and end this here. And thanks a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm.